between the episodes on Eisenholm. After a little smelting and logging, I began digging out a footprint for our basement and marking out the walls. Using some of the remaining cobblestone along with a few bricks, I got the walls roughed in. We'll finish texturing them later. With the basement shaped out for the moment, I turned my attention outside, where I started adding oak log pillars around the exterior of the farmhouse. What we had on hand was only the tiniest fraction of what we're going to need, so it was off to chopping, and chopping, and chopping, and ch y you know what, we're gonna need an unprecedented amount of oak wood during this series. Let's get more efficient. With some newly smithed tin bronze shears in hand, I made quick work of every single oak tree in the vicinity, and even after replanting more trees than I'd cut down, I still walked away with over a stack of oak seeds. Thank you, plenty of tree seeds mod. At some point, we're going to want to set aside a plot of land somewhere out of the way to grow just miles of trees, because even after cutting down every last oak in the area, it still wasn't enough. So while waiting for some of the earlier planted oak trees to finish growing, I returned to the basement for a short while before it was right back to Lumberjacksville. This logging session netted enough wood to at least finish up to the base of our upper floor. And for safety, of course, I filled in the floor with packed dirt for now. And that brings us to today, where we're going to do a lot of beautiful stuff once the rain clears up and these boys leave my yard. Because I need to grab those barrels. Let's see if I can get them right quick. You don't see me. You don't see me. Don't look at me. Oh. Did I get them all? One, two, three, four. There's still a barrel. Ah, ha, ha. Whoop. Ah. We're just going to bring these barrels down to the basement where they're going to live. There we go. Now we've got our barrels all lined up on walls that, for the most part, just need a bit of texture, but won't have to fully be... Uh, taken down like this wall will be to give ourselves a bit of a texture kind of like what I've got going on here a mix of conglomerate ashlar and uh, cobblestone so what's the plan for these barrels do you ask we're gonna fill them with water and fill them with oak logs and start making some tannin so we can get to some leather and perhaps one of them will be a barrel of dye there were a good few suggestions for what color of gambeson we should make and, you know, there's one that kept coming up over and over again. And I think we might just do it. It's going to be an easy color to do. Yeah, uh-huh. Definitely not a rare resource that's going to be super exceedingly hard to find. For you see, today... We're going to make... Red? Gambeson? You'll see. While we're waiting for the sun to fully come up, we we'll convert a couple of these into trunks. That is far more storage space than what we had previously. Oh man, yeah, let's let's compare this. So each chest is 16 slots. A trunk here, we've got our 16 here from the original, 16 here on the other side, and a whole other row right in the middle. I am going to keep this chest here so we can put it on our back. We might go on a little bit of an adventure and kind of head roughly in the general direction of the bees. We do have to go get a few things. As is tradition, we are running a little bit low on copper again. I keep making stuff. And I did burn through a couple of chisels. We do have some tin bronze ingots at the house, but having a good supply of copper on hand is going to be really nice because I don't want to just accidentally burn through all of our metal and then not have anything. And we can prospect around while we're out. Then we're going to need a lot, of, a lot of stone here, so, you know. If we're digging around, finding some copper, we can relieve some conglomerate stone if we find it in conglomerate, that is. Almost forgot. Can't leave home without a meal. Doesn't really matter which one of these I take, I don't think. And we'll keep the chest in our inventory until we need to take it off to store things into it. Then we'll put it on our back, because it does slow us down a little. And we're off to adventure! I feel like we depleted this copper vein, but let's take another quick little peek. I don't think I've broken ground on this copper site. I think I just picked up nuggets. Let's take a quick little peek down below. 
Aha, copper. Onward we go. We got a decent sized oak tree here. You know what? Now, I'm not super worried about cutting the branches before chopping it down because I've got over a stack of oak seeds still, so <laughs> I think we'll be good on seeds. I just don't have enough room to plant them in a reasonable area. We're going to have to make an arboretum at some point, I think. Let's take an eye. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe that one was a little larger than I expected. That's a lot of wood. One, two, three, four, nearly five stacks of oak. That's, uh, that, that's pretty good for a single tree, in all honesty, and a single seed. So we'll, we'll take that home and add it to our ever-growing abundant collection. Pop that chest on our back. Get back on out into the water here. We're going to sail through. Uh, I forgot to take off the marker. This is where I parked the raft when we first went to go place the skep at the bees. And it's okay that I still have my basket on me, as long as it's not too full to the point where I can't unequip it. Are these pines or oaks? Those are pines. Tiny little pines. Now, the last couple nights have been medium to high rift activity, so I'm glad that we've got a low activity night. Makes it a little bit safer for this excursion. Oh, there's Wode. Wouldn't that be useful for something? Wonder what? Before I go running off too far away in search of adventure, I think checking on the bees is probably a good idea. <gasps> Our skep's already populated. Okay. Well then, uh, let's just pop that into our inventory. There we go. Control right click. And we have ourselves a populated skep. You can live here, little beehive. I don't need you anymore. But I guess we can make a little trip home to drop that off and then... Oh my god, you're a chicken. I don't know why you scared me. I thought you were a cook pot. Why did a cook pot scare me? Did I come down this hole before? Yes, we have bees. Yes, we need to get them home safe and sound. But yes, I'm going to take a quick peek inside here. Ooh, brown coal. You know what? I don't hear anything, so... I'm just going to take a little bit of this. Okay. You know, a half stack is good enough for me for the moment. Let's pick up a few flowers here. We're going to need some for our apiary. And no, that's not where we keep monkeys. Are there any oak trees along the shoreline? You look like... You look like an oak tree. You're mine now. I don't like how long this is taking. I don't think we're gonna... Oh, we did manage to cut the whole thing down. Okay. So with the leaves on it, it does just... take a good while. It's only five pieces of wood. Definitely not worth the time. Hey, it's because we took all the leaves off this big guy. Okay. Mm, seven durability. I don't think that's going to be enough to cut this down. But you know, let's just see how much we get. It's probably going to be seven. I'm going to mark this tree here. Big old oak. Be back for you with an empty inventory and a, and a full axe. Well, hopefully with no more distractions, let's get our bees home. There we are. It's a nice, rifty morning, but we've got bees. Let's get them into a little home. And of course, right where I want to put the bees, we do have a rift. So we're just going to be real careful and work around that. <laughs> oh boy. So, holding control, we can scroll over to our inventory here. We've got our skep. And place it right on top here. We are going to have to make more skeps, that is for sure. And once we've got each of these posts filled with a skep, then the bees are going to be able to spread out and we'll have 
you know, a whole bunch of honey. I am also going to want to build a straw dummy in uh, a few select locations along here just to stop the bees from wanting to hurt me. Yeah. And then we'll just fence this area in. This side's going to be a little tricky because we have to work around this temporal little uh, troublemaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wing bong. I, I understand. There we go. And what about a gate, you ask? Great question. I forgot. What we can do is repurpose this gate that we have here. Because, sure, we might come in once or twice from this side, but we at least have the one entrance there. And then we can just make another little, little B entrance. Maybe here. There we go. Yeah. And now we just have to get rid of all the grass and fill this with flowers. So I'll see you in a moment when I grab ourselves a few flowers to populate this area. And after a night of flower gathering and planting, we have ourselves the beginnings of a nice little apiary just right beside the crops. Now the one populated skep that we do have is going to eventually start to spread out. I don't know if they will quite yet. It is mid-September now. Or late September, I suppose. So, we're probably not going to see them swarm quite yet. But they might. Who knows? Depends how cold it gets. At the very least, we can finish populating these skeps kind of throughout the winter, and come spring, this guy should be ready to start spreading around, and then we can get ourselves some honey. Now these crops are getting close to being done. These ones still want to twitch and, and all that. We do have a little bit beginning. We have one, one flax that is done. And a lot of these are sitting at eight out of nine. Some of the spelt is done, so we'll collect that. We're just gonna grab everything that's ready to go right now. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. We've got a lot more grain. I don't know if we're going to have room to store it all, but we'll we'll give it a try. Let's go ahead and get this down into our basement. And it's looking a little dark. Oh no, I forgot about the torches. Hello? I'm going to have to make some more torches. And not forget about them this time. So let's collect a little bit of grass. Grab you. There we go. Safety and security has been restored to the basement. Bop you back there so I don't forget. Now that we've got our bees in place, let's take care of a little bit of barrel stuff down below. So, we've got six barrels here. The five that we made here is along with the one that was sitting outside of the dirt dugout, but I moved it over here. So, in here... If we put five oak logs in with 50 liters of water that we've put in here, we get 50 liters of weak tannin after a day. So it's not too bad. We're going to do that with pretty well... I'd say all of these. Why not? And there we go. So we'll let these soak in there for about 24 hours. Or exactly 24 hours. And we'll come back tomorrow. In the meantime, let's pop up to the top floor here and continue getting a little bit more of that framing in. Now these are the corners of our balcony railings, so we're not gonna worry about putting those higher. So we could have a nice window looking out the back here, since we've got a five wide space. Now here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, perfect. Pop another divide in there. So what we'll likely end up doing is the room with the staircase here. We're going to have a wall running along here. I'll figure out what we have to do with this spot here so we don't bump our heads going up the staircase. But that way we can keep the space from being too large so we can keep it sealed and counting as a house down below. Or at least as an interior space of some kind. Because up here, it's going to... Got lightning. Up here is going to be fairly 
open to an extent. I will try and wall it off in segment sections with doors just to try and keep it considered inside. But if we have a couple rooms that are not really sealed, as long as they aren't ones we're spending a lot of time in, that's all right. The bedroom, that will be an important room. This will be a very important spot right here where the bedroom is to make sure it's nice and sealed so we don't freeze while we're trying to sleep. Of course, depending on if we get this done before winter, we may or may not even have to worry about that. Now, this wall here from the outside, we're not going to have to worry about any bracing in the middle. Plus, it's a six block wide, which I'm not a huge fan of. But hey, you know, we, we take what we get. And here is the same. Oh, two, three, four, five. How is that five? And that's, oh, that makes sense. And here, we'll also have a nice large window or maybe a set of two smaller ones. So we can look out over the bay from our bedroom. Along here, let's decide how large we want our bedroom to be. So we've got five here. Maybe we'll have our bedroom end about here. Maybe a five by five room. Yeah, that could work. Three, four, five. Perfect. That's right in the middle. Now, what are we going to do for the walls up here, you might ask? Well, I had a thought that we could probably use limestone. Maybe chalk, but probably limestone. It's in great abundance, just under the surface layer in, well, pretty much this entire region. So we can use that as sort of a not as bright plaster. I think it'll look pretty nice. But that will be after a big mining expedition, so I'm not going to worry about that for the time being. Ooh, we got lightning. Let's just block this back up for now, as we're going to deal with the basement. Speaking of the basement, let's quickly pop down there and grab ourselves another crack of food. Because we're getting to be a little bit hungry. Hop on back over to the dirt dugout. Grab ourselves a chisel and hammer. <gasps> Ooh, the scythe mold is ready. Good. Good. So I picked up some of this conglomerate rock when we were grabbing ourselves some more copper. So we're just gonna chisel this all down. And now we've got a lot of bricks. Pop that in there. 26, not too bad for texturing up the walls. We're just gonna have to probably grab some more at some point. Pop those back there. So I did make a scythe mold. I can't remember if that's from a mod or if that's in the vanilla game, but we, we've got it. And in here, I have some flower pots. So those will be just for some nice decorations. So we can get some flowers inside the house. All right, let's get some of this replaced. Now, I'm not super worried with the tops of a lot of these walls because I do want to add another layer of stone to the ceiling. So that way, we don't have to worry about any sort of cellar uh, ceiling problems because right now it's fine because we've got packed dirt. But if we decide to go with a wood floor, that's not going to seal this as a cellar. Any blocks that will be exposed, we will texture up. So as we come down here, there will be another layer of ceiling that will cover here. We're just going to have it have to slope down in here. And I think this is going to look pretty nice. So this room, I'm not worried about sealing as a cellar. It's just going to be considered part of the house. But in each of these rooms, I do want to maintain the little cellar bonus that we have here so that when we put things, especially in this room, after we build up the ceiling a bit, they will stay well preserved like our little cupboard. We can honestly fill in most of this wall with whatever we want. Let's fill in this roof just with some dirt. I'm realizing now, not all of these have been converted into trunks, so I will leave those spots open so I remember which one is which. <laughs> we should probably do that before uh, filling in the rest of the ceiling here. So out of all of them, that one is going to remain a little chest, because for maximum efficiency, we can get a trunk filling that space and trunk filling that space. 
Never mind, we can have it be a trunk facing this way. It doesn't matter which direction it's facing. All right, they're all going to be trunks. I don't know if that came through on the microphone, but the cats are parkouring upstairs. Anyway, these outer walls here, I am going to texture them up as well, which I guess with the cobblestone we have, we can get started on some of that. And with our little hut here, there's not a huge amount more we can reach. So we'll just add a couple other pieces in here. And finish the rest of it when we have, uh, well, the ceiling in place first. And we'll go from there. Now let's take our chest here. And we do have a few things ooh, to gather from the dirt dugout. We're go oh God, stop! That we're going to need a little bit later on here. In about 13 hours or so. Plop our chest down there. And let's transfer all of our hides over. Don't think we have much else. You know what, let's move our flax as well. And our sewing kit. And let's turn as much of this into spools as we can. We've got a few threads left. Because let's see, for Gambeson in total, we're going to need 10 for the main body and a sewing kit. Two for a total of 12, along with two spools and a sewing kit. And another four for 16 in total. Total with spools. I shouldn't have converted those into that. We would have had just enough. Okay, so we need two more sewing kits and three more spools by the looks of it. But what about mordanted cloth, you say, for the red? All will be revealed in time, my young Padawan. Worry not, you should. Oh boy. Why are there so many of you if it's a low rift activity night? Huh? Oh, 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 oh. Do not lose my light. Huh. Let's duck and weave around these guys and get back to the dugout to make use of that mold that just finished firing. Just kidding, I'm a silly billy and I forgot all the copper back at the house. I, uh, I can't remember where I put all my copper. Oh, I know exactly where I put it. It's here. I already put it in a crucible. <sighs> all right, all right. Oh boy, okay. There we go, we've got a use for all that aged wood. It's pretty much only good for fire pits. You can't put it on a pit kiln. And I have not tested if I can put that into uh, an oven yet. Maybe I'll bring some back with me and test that out. I think we might have to make some bread. Bees, barrels, and bread? I think that's the title of the episode. While we're here, let's get ourselves a little bit more copper melted here. We'll grab ourselves some nails and strips. That's almost done. That is done? Okay. Tongs! Tin bronze is done as well. Now I'm thinking, for safety's sake, we, we may want to move this uh, probably to there. Scythe. Let's make ourselves another pickaxe as well. You can never have too many of those. And we'll just fill up the rest into ingot molds for later use. While we're waiting for that to cool, this lead ingot I cast earlier, as we avoid this temporal rift, I'm going to turn into a couple more windows. Maybe get one here. Just have a little bit more light coming in, especially if we're going down into a dark staircase. One last look at the sun, I feel like would be 
A, a nice way to enter and exit the basement. A little corner window on the inside, doesn't look too bad, and it's centered on the outside because of our uh, kind of jutting out support pillars. I'm okay with that. I don't think I need another one here because that's just going to get blocked by the staircase because that's going to be wood there. It'll be right in the corner, which... Yeah, we'd only be able to get a half one under the stairs, so... Asymmetry it is. Yeah, just adding that one little window does make this area feel a lot more bright and open. I'm a fan of that. I like it. Up top here, we're definitely going to have a couple windows as well. At the very least, I'll just plop those there temporarily. We know we're going to have windows here. They are a little bit funny floating for the time being, but that's, that's okay with me. Still debating if I want this to go to be a 2x3 or just a 1x3 or just two little single windows. Or maybe have them go to the floor. That might not be a bad idea. But once we start getting the walls in, then we can make those kinds of decisions. Let's head on back to the dugout once again. We're doing a lot of back and forth, because I think those flower pots were done. And possibly our metal has cooled. Flower pots. Ah, yes. Everything is looking good. Let's pop these away. Make ourselves a scythe. Now, I haven't used a scythe very often, but they are exceedingly useful for collecting large swaths of grass. Which I feel eventually we're going to need a lot of dry grass. So just having this and also using it for collecting cattails and such is going to be very beneficial going forward. There we go. And for the time being, we can just start to stack this up here. There we go. Nice little collection of hay to uh, keep us, well, for the moment, just to kind of have it. Eventually, we could use it as some lower nutrient feed for the animals, though we have a ton of grain, and I don't know how much bread we can really reasonably make in a short amount of time. Speaking of bread, <sighs> some more of this is ready to be harvested. We're going to be doing this in piecemeal, I think. Mature flax. Good, good, good. We got the... the shaky grass here. I see you shaking. Everything over here is still in the middle of growing. So it's just some of the flax. Which is not bad. We got ourselves 10 flax twine out of that. So I think with that we might actually have everything we need. For Gambison. Oh, not quite. Not quite. So we need, if my math is correct and if my memory is good, we need one more flax fiber. Just a single flax fiber to turn this into another piece of twine. Then we should have everything for a full set of tailored gambeson. So once even one more of those little pieces of, uh, of flax finish growing, we're off to the races. We're good. Let's make some more chests here. So, uh, any of these that we break are pretty well going to shower us with goods, and I uh, guess it's just a matter of deciding which ones, so let's, let's do these two to start. There we go. So that leaves only one chest left to be turned into a trunk, and then we'll be ready to... Pretty much board up the uh, the ceiling. Or stone it up, I suppose. There we go. Our tannin is ready. So let's just grab, while we can, from underneath here, a little bit more oak. So some of these we're going to want to leave as weak tannin for putting our leather into. And some of these we're going to want to put five more oak logs in there to turn it into strong tannin after another day. Now I hear you. I know what you're saying. 
But Solston, once again, if you're using all of these barrels for tannin, what about the dye? What about the gambeson? Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm getting to that. We'll get there eventually. By the end of the episode, you'll see. Don't be scared. So we're going to take this weak tannin, plop in our five hides, and there we go. What? There may have been a step that I forgot, but I was, I was testing you. Yep, 100%. That's, that's all that was. Yep. As you see, as everyone knows, and of course I knew, I was just waiting for you to say it, you have to put lime into the water and make lime water and then place your hides in there for 20 hours to uh, turn them into soaked hides before you can put them in the tannin. <laughs> Jeez, guys, everybody knows that. <laughs> uh, uh, I gotta go. Make one more trip through the dark of night as we often tend to do back to the dirt dugout because there's always things that I need that are in the exact opposite spot that I already am. This little guy that we made a little while ago, I have a plan. My initial thought for this little corner here was going to be to have uh, a nice decorative storage vessel. There's a particular one here, the harvest vessel, that I was hoping to find eventually at, uh, I believe, an artisan trader, yeah. But it wouldn't really do us much good because we're going to want to store any of the grain down in the basement, and having it here isn't really going to save us much time. However, having a corn to grind our grain into flour right beside where we're going to bake it, that actually makes a lot more sense. That, and with it being uh, paradoite, we actually have that same little splash of kind of a greenish tint that I was hoping for in the corner there, though it is a little duller, but I think it works out pretty well. We may change it out for basalt if we get some polished basalt and swap out the color on here, which I won't be rebuilding it. That would be most likely with the paintbrush once we can use the uh, chisel tools mod. I think while we're waiting for everything down in the basement to finish soaking and diluting and all that good stuff, let's make ourselves a little bit of bread. What are we thinking here? We got spelt, flax, rye, and more spelt. We have a lot of spelt. Let's use spelt. And in go the grain. And on go the grind. And the nice thing is we won't have to go down to the basement, that temporary water source down there. I might make it into something a bit more permanent. But once we do have the sink in place, it'll actually be a water source so we can always just grab a bucket, fill up from the sink to make our dough. Let's pop in the flour, pop in the water. There we go. And we just need a little bit more water. That's one liter per flour. Now let's test out here, can I, oh I can. So we can use the aged firewood just like regular firewood for our ovens, so that's perfect. We'll probably relocate that big old stack over here, although it might be useful over there for smelting a little bit. Is that, is that a rift right outside our window? <laughs> I'm not a fan of that, but okay. And now we just place our bread inside the preheated ovens and watch them bake. We watch them rise. And if you look close, you can actually see them slowly leavening as the carolers outside are once again singing the songs of their people. And I will tell you here on the tooltip, when it's dough, when it's part baked, when it's just bread, and then when it's overcooked bread, which lasts a little bit longer, but has a little bit less satiation or saturation. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, that's so beautiful. Ah, our first baking. There we are. We have ourselves a dozen. Now, the last eight days in our inventory... But if we pop on down into the basement here, I placed a few... Oh, 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 oh. That room is forfeit. 
but if we place them down here on some shelves, they're good for 30 days. Let's just eat one here. Not bad, not bad. An entire loaf of bread. Keep a couple of those on us just to keep our nutrition levels a little bit more aligned. We need a bit more grain. We've also been slacking on fruit recently. We're good on protein, good on vegetables. Perhaps uh, one torch down in the large room there is uh, not quite enough. There we go. We are eventually going to have to make a lot more crocs because I do want to fill this shelf and this shelf full of crocs. Cook pots, we can only really do two at a time here, so I'm not too worried. We have enough spares as it is. I think I pilfered a couple from a ruin at some point. I don't remember making this many. I thought I only made four. Good sirs, I get that it's apocalyptic, but please, cease and desist. Go back to your homes. There's nothing to see here. Can you believe this? Look at that. You'd think Taylor Swift was here or something. I wonder if I can get them to start hitting each other. Yes, throw your rocks. Hurt each other. Like the fools you are. That's right, start brawling amongst yourselves. Turn upon your own countrymen. See, we're gonna got a little bit of flax. And with that one flax fiber we've collected, now we have the four flax twine we want. So thank you, Drifters. The Gambeson is complete thanks to your not-so-noble sacrifice. This is how we burn through several knives, everybody. And it's how we learn if uh, RNG is on our side. Because there's very low drop chances from these. Especially, well, there's a couple here that I might have taken down, but a lot of these are going to have reduced drop rates because of the infighting. So I'm expecting to maybe get a couple of flax, and that's about it. A temporal gear would just be, oh, mm, beautiful icing on the cake. Exceedingly unlikely, far less than a 1% chance. I think we'd have to, uh, with the odds we've got, maybe one in a thousand might have one. Rough estimate. Looks like one flax fiber is all that's in the cards for us. Except for you boys, what do you have? Nothing. What about you? Also nothing. Okay. Now I noticed that oak tree has grown and a few others that I planted have as well. But I'm going to place down a few of these flower pots beforehand. Uh, I don't have the table that I plan to put it on here built quite yet. But we'll just plop it down there to get it out of our inventory. Uh, I probably will want a planter in the corner here just to have a nice little bit of foliage by the window. Um, but we'll just kind of place it down for the time being. Why not? Just one here. I don't plan on keeping one here. This is going to be like a prep table or where we can put down crocs full of food. There we go. Nice little splash of color for the kitchen. Maybe for this one here we could put the woad in there. It's a little tall. I'm not a huge fan of it. But we can just pretend uh, until I remove it anyway that it's some kind of herb or something. I don't know what kind of herb would have yellow tips like that. I don't know, maybe it's uh, some green onion that's starting to go. Now we still do have seven more hours until these are done. So we're gonna be looking at like 5 p.m. by the time these are ready. So let's take a quick little peek at a mod that I just installed. So recommended by the ever wonderful Kurazar is the extended workbench. So we just need, by the looks of it, nine boards. Now, for the time being, we don't really have a workshop, per se, to put it in. So we're just going to have it near the house here. We'll plop that down just right here for the time being. We will eventually move it when we build a proper workshop, or even move it to the dirt dugout, or build another one, who knows. But with this, we can actually, before even getting to iron, we can make the trim here. And it'll be not as quick, but a whole heck of a lot quicker than it otherwise would have been. So I've got a polished shirt rock. There's 
two different types we're going to need. We'll need corner pieces and flat pieces, and then we can just rotate them with the regular chisel. There we have it, one by four voxel sections. And these are going to go like so. Just a nice trim up around the top and it'll kind of break up the conglomerate from the plaster a little bit. Give us a nice little deeper color border around here. And there we go. Oh, this is, this is nice, I like this that somehow we didn't entirely burn through that chisel. Thank you, Workbench, and thank you, Kurozar, for that recommendation. Let's get our trim in place here. And there we go. That actually only took maybe five minutes. And that's far less time than it would have taken to chisel all that by hand. Look at that. That's a nice trim. I like that. The kitchen is very warm tone centric, but I feel the little bit of a blue from the countertops helps to kind of keep it from being too overly warm. And the uh, evening sun doesn't help all that much. Speaking of the evening sun, though. We have five minutes left until our leather's ready to process to the next stage. So we're going to take our five soaked hides, pop them in here, give them a little uh, scrapey scrape, and then we're just going to take it into this barrel of weak tannin and pop those in. And we got three days, so that's going to take a little bit of time, but that's okay. Meanwhile, our strong tannin is almost ready to go. And what did I say about asking about the gambeson? Don't worry about the gambeson. The gambeson's coming. It's coming. Don't worry. It's going to be red. It's going to be glorious. It's coming. There we go. And our strong tannin is just starting to finish. So we've got our weak tannin here, our strong tannin here. Don't worry about the barrel at the end. Nothing's going on there. Nothing at all. Now we should be able to... Our plain cloth is gone. Wherever could it have gone? I don't know how many of these little weird bits I'm, I'm keeping out. I mean, anybody who's paying attention knows I'm making bread gambeson, but, you know, we're going to disregard the linen for the time being, and we're just going to grab a whole bunch of this aged firewood and put a uh, regular firewood there. And you know what? I only need three stacks, so we can keep that here. That'll be fine. And I'm going to drop off our chiseling stuff here while we're in the neighborhood. And now that we know that aged firewood can be used for the ovens, I think we're just going to stock up here with some of the aged firewood. That way we don't uh, we don't start cutting into using up some of these oak logs that we're definitely going to need to finish the framing. And I'm thinking of using birch for the floor up there. I don't know if that'll be the ceiling down here as well, or if we're going to have a bit of a multi-block chiseling to give ourselves a different bit of a ceiling. I don't want to do more plaster over here. I feel like that's going to be too much plaster. Over here for our entrance, I probably will have oak boards going across here, just because the um, the deck up above is going to be oak planks, and so just keeping it consistent there. Plus, it'll give us a bit more of a rough look in the entrance area here. Uh, I am going to do something with this little entryway. I have a plan, I just need... Uh, couple rock types and I know where one of them is that I need actually I know where all of the rock types I want are and then we'll have a nice little decorative not super fancy but kind of fancy entryway it's not going to be these aged polished uh, conglomerate blocks I will keep them here for the threshold where the doors are but in here we're gonna have a little bit of a splash of color and the trim that we have above the window clearly is not breaking our insulation. I did test it out on the other side, uh, which does break the insulation. So as long as one side is flat, I guess we're okay. But with our wood framing sticking out an entire block, I might add a little bit of a 
kind of half block of more stone just to thicken up the walls a little bit. And that'll give us some room to then be able to extend that out. Have the, uh, the wood go the whole way out to the edge of that block and then a little bit into the next one. So we can keep it recessed, but it's actually more than a whole block. And I'll probably copy this little support beam framing type of idea into the tops of all of the other windows on the bottom floor here, as well as I'll probably make window frames around any windows we have up top. Ones up top might have a little bit less depth to them just because I don't think I'll be double thicking the walls up there like I will be for the stone down here. For a stone foundation, it makes a bit more sense. So uh, a little drifter told me something. Apparently, our cloth is ready and we can make our red gambeson. Obviously, the cloth fairy must have come in the night and gifted us with, well, something special. Now, clearly, nothing is off about this situation in the slightest. And this is definitely, your eyes are just deceiving you. This is, this is red, 100%. Don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it. Why are you worried about it? That's right. We've got right here our totally red gambeson. Let's put these on. What is brown apart from just a dark rusty red? Kind of like my beard. You see, it goes with my shoes. And my shoes, clearly, as anyone can see, are red. Ooh, we walk around all clinky clunky now. That certainly won't get annoying. But we are armored up now, so we're a little bit more defended. And regardless of what shade of red our armor is, we can still just pretend it's red. Because we know in our hearts that it is. Now, I do have a mod on in place where I believe I can make it disappear. It's the invisible armor mod, and uh, that way, when we're just milling about, we can still be defended while looking casual. So whether we're out on the farm or down in the depths, we'll be nice and padded. And hopefully this will keep us alive and we won't have to worry too much about a couple hits taking us down. I do also like that the trim kind of almost matches my eyes. We've got a little bit of that cyan in there. But anyway, I think this is about where we have to call it for the day. Thank you everyone so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, maybe consider leaving a like. I don't ask it very often, so maybe. If you feel like it, don't do anything that you don't want to do. Never let anyone force you into something, okay? You'll be your own autonomous person. I'm proud of you. I'd also like to give a shout out to our channel members. Your names are coming across the screen right now. You are the best. Thank you so much. If you would like to support the channel by becoming a member, there is a join button just down below this video. I don't have much to offer, but I will let my cats know who sponsored Wet Food Day. It's like I can hear their meows even now. That's all for me. I gotta go feed the screaming cats now. I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Every day, every day it's like this. I love these cats. Ah. <sighs>